Hey, what's up everybody? Ramey here and today we are talking about barbells. Um, what kind of barbell should you get? Uh, can I get a cheap one? Do I need an expensive one? What kind of grip should, texture should it have? Um, what size should it be? All those kind of questions that you're going to ask when you first go out and start to look at all the websites and all the different bars they have on them. And can you get one from Dick's or Walmart? Do you need to go get a really expensive one from Rub? All those kind of questions that are going through your head. Behind me you see specialty barbells. We're not talking about those. We're talking about your standard 7 foot home gym Olympic size, which means it fits 2 inch plates barbell. And I'll tell you why you'd get one of these versus one of the one inch small ones that fits little weights. Um, if you're worried about like spin and certain, like you're, you're getting really specific in your, the type of barbell you have, why you should get like deadlift versus power bar and that kind of stuff, this is not the video for you. This video is for beginners looking to buy their first bar. All right, so this is, what I have in front of me is a standard seven foot Olympic size barbell. That is the kind of barbell you generally want for your home gym. You want one of these seven foot two inch, that what's called Olympic weights, over the standard little one inch plate bars for the simple fact that these hold a lot more weight. It's much easier to get these in bigger sizes and hold a lot more weight. And these are pretty much standard where you're going to find plates and stuff. Those one inch, you don't really find those or see those as much anymore. So this is what you want. Seven foot bar, unless of course you have a smaller space, but standard seven inch bar. This bar that I have in front of me is a Rogue Ohio bar. Is It is, it, it is an expensive stainless steel bar that I think costs like around $400. So this is a very pricey bar. I'll talk about why I spent this kind of money and if you can get one of the cheaper ones and if they work. And what are all the features of these bars that make them cost more or less? All right, so one of the first things that I look at when I'm buying a barbell is I ask myself, how much weight am I lifting? What am I using this for? And if you're a beginner, you're probably like, hey, I'm not gonna be lifting a lot of weight, so it doesn't matter. I don't need one of these, you know, super powerful, like $400 bars, a cheap one should work just fine. And in general, I would tell you that if you're not lifting a lot of weight, yes, a cheap barbell will, is not going to like break on you. And one of the reasons that people recommend getting a barbell is you don't want the bar to break on you. It's a super important thing because this is one of the things you're going to use for a lot of exercises. And you don't want it to snap on you because snapping could mean serious catastrophic injury. It's something that's very important. So we look at the strength and how much weight the bar holds. In general, the, the cheap bars will hold weight. And, and most people who are lifting, you know, sub 250 pounds are going to be, the way, they're not going to break on the cheap bars. But there are some reasons those cheap bars aren't too great that I'm going to talk about that do matter for beginners. And, other, and they, maybe they won't affect you, but I want to bring them up and kind of let you know all that stuff. All right, so the first big thing we think about is, like, how strong is the bar? How much weight does it hold? Like, I don't want it to break. Okay, so you need to look at the specs of the bar that you're looking at and say, is this going to break? If you're buying a bar from any of the main brands, like Rogue Fitness, Rep Fitness, Texas, Titan Fitness, any of those kind of fitness, the bar is probably going to be okay and not break, you don't have to worry about it breaking. Now, one thing I will point out that you're gonna to start to notice when, okay, so, okay, so I know that any bar, let's say I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna bench 150 pounds, I'm not that strong yet. You also wanna make sure like, am I gonna outgrow this pretty soon and have to get another one? Cause you don't wanna buy once, cry once, buy, spend $100 on a cheap bar and then only to outgrow it in six months and have to spend $200 on a more expensive one or three or four or $500 on a more expensive one. You wanna get what you need right away. So, but you've narrowed it down. You're like, okay, I'm not gonna break the bar. So I already know that I can get, get away with one of the cheaper bars cause they're gonna hold the amount of weight. Now, the next feature that I look at when I'm a beginner looking at barbells is the diameter of the grip. How thick is the bar? So what you're gonna notice on the cheap bars is that the, the diameter is going to be 30 plus millimeters. On the more expensive bars, it's going to be about 29 millimeters for a power bar, 27 to 28 for a deadlift bar, and the, the general like do everything bars, which is like a CrossFit bar, which are 
the best bars for most people are around 28 to 28.5 millimeters, which is what mine is. Mine is 28.5. That means it's pretty much going to do everything and be like the one bar for everybody that does everything. Um, when you hold and grip a 30 millimeter barbell, it's going to feel pretty thick in your hand. So one of the big disadvantages of those bars from Dick's Sporting Goods or Walmart um, or the cheaper like economy barbells from weightlifting companies like Titan or Rep or York or whatever is that 30 millimeter thick bar is not very comfortable and it's a lot nicer and more fun and feels better to grip a 28.5 millimeter barbell. Now this of course is personal preference. If you've never lifted before you may not know the difference but if you're a person who's went to the gym before and had been lifting a while like i didn't buy a barbell until i had been lifting for like 20 years i finally bought my first barbell because i built a home gym i would have hated and i do because i lifted some people's house to have them despised the 30 millimeter barbell every time i would have lifted it would have been terrible for me just an awful experience and considering that this is a bar that i want to last the rest of my life and i want my children to use I wanted to get one that was of the right size for me. So I did a lot of testing before I actually purchased the right bar, the thickness. All right, so that's, that's one of the big features that's super important. The next big feature that I think is super important for a beginner is the material and grip. And I put those two things together. Um, I put neuro and grip together because the type of material that the bar is, has coating on it is going to affect your grip. So for most people, I generally recommend you only look at two types of materials of bars. That is bare steel and stainless steel. Bare steel is generally the cheapest um, because it is not protected at all and it is susceptible to rust. That doesn't mean yours is going to rust. It just means you need to take care of it by oiling it and be a little mindful of the bar itself. Now, for me, I live in a saltwater area. I'm a surfer, I live on the coast. My garage is, um, my bar's in the garage in humid, coastal, southern humidity and salt. So I opted for a stainless steel bar, which is generally the most expensive kind of bar you can buy um, because I cared about rust prevention so much. The feel of bare steel and stainless steel is awesome. It has the best feel, and in my opinion, it does make a difference on the grip. Um, also has a great feel in your hand. The other coatings for bar, there are things like Cerakote and Chrome and Zinc, all have an unnatural feel and they can all chip and wear away too. Whereas bare steel or stainless, there's nothing to chip on your bar. You should see some pictures online of like Cerakote bars that are just chipped and look terrible because they've, they've gotten uh, broken. Um, and also the feel, it affects the grip a lot. There are different kinds of grips for bars. Um, in general, as a beginner, you're not going to care too much as long as it has some kind of nice grip. Now, the beginner bars at Walmart that you're going to buy are going to be chrome-plated 30 millimeter bars at Dick's or Walmart, and there's not going to be much grip to them whatsoever. So almost picture that you're going to have a smooth bar. You're going to see grip in the picture, but it's not really going to be grip. The bar that I'm gripping right now almost feels like light sandpaper when I rub my hand over it. The bars at Walmart will feel just like nice smooth when you're going over them. It won't feel like there's any grip whatsoever. So that's one of the big differences is the grip. Okay, so we've got the, the, uh, the size of the bar is important for beginners and important for everybody. We've got the material and the grip. What else? There are a few other things to pay attention to and this starts to come down to what am I using this bar for? So some bars have grip in the center of the, of the bar. Mine does not. Why does mine do not? Well, I don't do squats with this bar, so I don't need that grip. But for a beginner, I probably suggest that you get a bar with the grip in the middle, unless you know you're not going to be doing squats with it. Um, those are the basic main features that I think a beginner should look out for. There are other things that are, get super important, like the amount of spin on this bar, um, the, the whip that the bar has, the amount of bend and give that it'll give when you're doing like a deadlift or Olympic lifts. Um, however, I think as a beginner, that stuff's probably not going to matter too much to you. But if you're more advanced, like I had been lifting for 20 years when I was buying my bar, you know, 
my goal was to ask myself, what am I going to do with my bar? So let me just give you some recommendations. If you know that you're going to be doing power lifting only with your bar, you can get what's called a power bar. That's where you should be spending your time looking at power bars. If you know that you're going to be doing only deadlift, you can look at deadlift bars, which is really a, a very specialty bar in my opinion. Um, if you're going to be doing a bit of everything, maybe CrossFit, um, and maybe you're just not sure, you should be looking at the all-around bars like the CrossFit bars. This is an Ohio bar from Rogue. It is an all-around bar that should handle everything that I throw at it pretty, pretty much pretty well. Um, the only reason I would ever need to upgrade this bar is if I was getting very technical and like I was going to start entering power lifting competitions and or lifting a significant amount of weight that would severely um, hamper my ability to progress on this. Um, but for most people, this is a once in a lifetime bar that you buy. Now, as I said, this bar is $400. So let's get down to the bare basic facts of it. Can I buy the bar? And I'm going to talk about cheap bars, good bars, like when you should buy what. So can you get away with a cheap bar from Dick's or Walmart? The answer is yes, you absolutely can. My father has one. Um, he's had it for like 40 years. It's a 30 millimeter chrome plated bar. It drives me absolutely insane when he uses it, but he doesn't lift over like 200 pounds. And it works for him. He, I don't know what he spent for. He probably got it 30 years. He probably spent $40 on it. It does work for him and it does work. But I kind of tell him that it's kind of like trying to run in flip flops. Like, yes, I can do it, but it's, it's really uncomfortable. It's not a pleasurable experience. And it's just not, not an overall like great thing that I really want to do. And if I started to lift heavier, like in the 300 pound range, I wouldn't really trust that bar that he has. Um, but he does use it, so people can and do use cheap bars, and they function just fine. Now, here's the real kicker of it. Cheap bars, if you're buying them individually, if you're getting them in a set, that's one thing. Um, you can get some great deals on sets and get a cheap bar to start out, and I think that's perfectly fine as a beginner. If you get a cheap set and there's a cheap bar in it, Use the bar for as long as you can, and if you decide to upgrade, you really didn't pay anything for the bar. And those cheap sets, you're paying for the weight. And you can always keep that weight. Weight is weight, right? You can always use the weight. So if you get a cheap bar in a set, go for it, keep it, use it as long as you want to, and then upgrade when you're ready. But let's say you're just buying the bar outright. Um, cheap bars range from anywhere from, I see them roughly for about $70 to $100, all the way up to like $150 for cheap bars. And those are the 30 millimeter ones that I really don't like. Here's the kicker. You can get a pretty decent barbell for around $150. So for not much more than the cheap bar, you can get a pretty decent bar if you shop around. Look at Rep and Titan would be two places where you can get a pretty decent, like an okay bar for 150 bucks. The next level up, you can actually buy a Rogue, what's called Boneyard Bar, which means that it like has a scratch on it or something. Usually for like a, a, a CrossFit type bar, 28.5 billion, for around $195 from Rogue. So you can get a great Rogue, like three, $400 barbell for about $200. And then obviously if you're spending more than that, you're looking at picking out certain features for yourself. Because um, you don't need to spend $400. Yes, this is nice. No, I could have spent $200 and also gotten a Rogue barbell that would last me for life and be great. I specifically wanted stainless steel. I also wanted it to be brand new and nice and shiny. I also could have, yes, spent $150 on one from like Rep or Titan that would have been sufficient. Um, one of the cheaper ones would have driven me crazy. I absolutely would have had a terrible experience. As I said, it's like running in sandals. Like get running shoes to run. Get a decent barbell. Um, you know, so you'll be on a long line and you'll see some people talk about you buy a, you invest in a good barbell. It's the one thing to invest in because you don't want it to break. And that is true. Um, you, it is the one piece of equipment. Like I can buy really cheap weights, but I want to put money into my barbell. That doesn't mean you need to put four or five hundred dollars into it. It might just mean you need to put one fifty into it. Um, however, having said that, the cheap barbells do work. I wouldn't dissuade from someone from lifting because they couldn't get a good barbell. 
The cheap dumbbells do, barbells do work. Just be very careful when you start getting above the 200 pounds on the cheap barbells. Watch, make sure, the, see what the weight is really rated for on them. And get, get a little cautious because um, there are pictures of, of them breaking, the ends snapping off, the middle um, breaking, like things on the bar snapping or breaking is not a good thing. As I said, that could lead to catastrophic injury that you definitely want to avoid. Um, so I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, let me know. But overall, my take is, yeah, any barbell is probably going to work. There's just some better options out there for pretty good prices that I think would serve you much better when you're buying your first barbell for your home gym. All right, later all.